today we are going to be doing a really cool lesson called Zen Then. Let's get started. Zen is a Japanese word for meditation. Sitting still and quiet, it helps us to calm down when we're mad or stressed. And Venn refers to Venn diagrams. Maybe you've done them in school. It's a visual way of showing similarities and differences in sets of things. This shows a Venn diagram right here. It's very simplified. You've got a dog on one side that's represented by the blue circle and a kitty cat on one side that's represented by the pink purple colored circle. And where they overlap, there's an ellipse or a sort of a football shape that you can see. What those things are showing is that the blue area is just for what the dog has, that only the dog does, not the cat. And on the other side, where it's this light purple color, is the only something that the cat does that uh, the dog does not do. And in the center is what they share, what they both have in common. The dog barks and comes when called, and the cat meows and comes when they feel like coming. So you get the idea of the separate things that the cat and dog do that they, each other doesn't do. And in the center, the things they have in common is that they both have fur and they both have paws. So that's an example of a Venn diagram to give you an idea of what we're talking about when I say Venn and the Zen Venn. We're going to be using them to fill the spaces that they make with beautiful patterns, also known as Zen tangles. Let's get started. We're going to be using just an ordinary piece of white paper. This is drawing paper. You could use printer paper if that's all you've got, no problem. We also need some varying sizes round objects. This is a piece of uh, roll of masking tape, and this is a lid to a vitamin jar. No idea what that lid's from. This is some yogurt. Got a couple plates. Whatever you need to do. I think these are probably a little big, so I'm gonna leave those plates backing up, voiding that, forgetting that part. Sorry, guys. It's more streamlined, less. Okay. Ready? <laughs> We're going to be using some round objects found around the house. You can look around your drawers and your refrigerator and find some lids. This is a vitamin lid. This is a roll of masking tape. Uh, and we just need to find three. So hopefully nothing too small. This is a little small. Let's not use that one. You don't want to have too teeny of spaces to color in. So take your first one, any choice that you make, and I like to just place it down on my piece of paper. I'm just using an ordinary piece of paper. Um, you can turn it horizontally or vertically, it does not matter. Take your Sharpie, we're not using a pencil today, so if you have a Sharpie, that's great. If you don't, you could use a pencil in a pinch. I'm going to place my hand on top of the lid so it doesn't wiggle and use my Sharpie slowly. Ran into my hand there, so I need to keep going. That's the part where a lot of my students kind of mess up a little bit sometimes as their line ends up getting wiggly there. That's not a big deal. Just keep going. We can always fix that later. If you go slow, you could probably avoid that. Just saying. I've got another size. I think I'm going to overlap it, just like the Venn diagram. I'm going to draw. I could choose the inside of this roll of masking tape or the outside, just pick one. Oh yeah, so now you start to see the idea of the Venn diagram idea. We're not making a Venn diagram. We're not going to write cats and dogs and fur and paws inside. We're just using that idea. Uh, and I'm gonna take the third one. I'm only using three so I don't get too complicated. 
Um, I'm going to draw one just, let's see, I think maybe out here. I'm going to carefully go around. I've noticed that the outside of this lid has some little bumps on one end of it. Just the grabber, the things that you would grab onto as you're opening. Oops, I gotta get my arm in the right place. Um, so try and use the side that's more smooth or else you'll get bumps, which will look a little funny. Okay, I've got three so far. I'm gonna go for five total. Five is the perfect amount. I have some choices. I'm overlapping them. I don't have to overlap them. I could have one free floating. You get to decide that. I'm making up my mind as I speak, and that's what we do when we make art. That's part of the good thinking process. It's also feeling. A lot of it, a lot of art is just what feels right. So I'm thinking about where, boy, it's hard to decide. There's so many fun options. I'm just gonna go with that. I'm gonna use the outside of the tape this time. Now it's a little bumpier, so I have to go extra slow. Now I had to stop because, oh, I forgot to finish the circle. All is not lost. You can just put the tape back down, line it up as best you can, check all the sides, wiggle it until it looks like it's looking good. Hold your hand down on top of it so it doesn't wiggle. Finish your circle, yes, one more to go. I'm almost done. I'm gonna not do that, I don't like it. Let me move this around a little bit. I tend to make things a little asymmetrical, which means not perfectly the same on each side. Um, because sometimes symmetrical things can look a little bit boring, a little calm. And I don't want this to be boring. I want this to be fun. There, perfect. Sometimes you just have to move the thing around until you find the spot. Like in that spot, it's little, it's a little lid. I've chosen the side that's not bumpy. So I got a smooth circle. Oh, I ran into my finger again. Holding it. And nice. All done with those for a while. I have some interesting shapes. I'm kind of excited about this. Feeling, who am I kidding? I'm really excited about this. This looks amazing. Okay, so <laughs> sometimes you just have to take a break and look back at what you've started. What do you think? I wonder how yours looks so far. I wonder if you're feeling like you like where you put things. At this point, I think that we'll let you have a little time to do your part and we'll meet back here and see how it looks. you've had enough time to draw your circles, your overlapping circles like the Venn diagram idea. And now we're ready to fill them with some really cool patterns. Now a pattern is a repeating thing. It's not just one thing like a, a picture of a tree. It is a uh, it's a place where you can really play around with what it looks like if something is done over and over again. Um, and that can look something like these sort of scales that I've drawn here. Um, sort of look like floating eyeballs over here. They look a little bit like olives too, or bubbles. Um, this looks a little bit, it's a wiggly, wavy line that is a, it's a really fun, kind of repeating pattern that's super easy to draw. Um, it looks ends up looking like it was hard to draw later when you color it in. This one ends up looking a little bit like a basket when you're done with it. It's just a series of lines going one way, then another way, then another way. Um, and this one was a very fun one. This is the first time I've drawn this. I'm kind of psyched how it turned out. I did a circle and a circle and a circle, sort of, because it went off the edge, I had to stop. And another part of that circle. And then I drew lines radiating out from it like the sun. 
So then I had a checkerboard pattern that I could fill in every other one with the black. So of course you could use something other than black for any of these as well. You can use color, you can use, um, oh, I almost forgot one. You've got this one here, which is fun. It sort of looks like um, hot dogs and peas or something to me, but it's just a way of making marks and filling it in um, and seeing what it looks like in contrast or when black and white um, play off of each other. Um, we're also going to be coloring them with colored pencils. Um, so let's think about what pattern you would like to draw. These are just some examples or ideas of what I've done. There's also a way you can look up online and see something called Zen Tangles just like Zen, uh, the Z-E-N and Tangles, and there's lots of them online, so you'll be able to see how they're done. So let's get started. We've got all these cool spaces that we can use. Um, we've overlapped our circles, so we have many, many places where we can add patterns to. I'm going to start by doing a pattern that is sort of a, an easy and fun one that some of you have probably done before in your life. It's not a hard pattern to do, it's just a simple stripe. And I'm going to use a Sharpie. I've got a fine point Sharpie. You could use a thick point Sharpie. You could use a colored pencil uh, or a marker. You could decide what you're gonna use. So I think instead of just doing a regular straight stripe, I'm going to do a slightly curved stripe. I'm going to start in the middle. You can start wherever you want and experiment. If you're not sure, my Sharpie's tired. If you're not sure what you want to do, just practice a little bit like I did. And the trick about Zen tangles, drawing patterns, is they show you how you're feeling. So if you are feeling tired or if you're feeling hyper, it will show in your lines or in your marks. So here's a skinny one, I threw it in there. This one shows that I'm talking <laughs> while doing it. I'm only filling in one area of that circle, not filling in that little ellipse or sort of football shape that's between the two because I wanna save that for something else. So I now have a choice of whether I want to make this black and white stripes or if I want to save it and just leave it plain now and then color it later. I think I'll color it later. All right, so I'm going to leave that empty space for a little bit and I'm going to go over, hmm, I think I'll go, hmm. See, these are where you make decisions. I make decisions too as I go. I think I'll start with this one. I rather like that. Um, remember, Sharpie is a very permanent pen, so if you hold it down for too long in any one place, it'll make a darker dot. That works great if you're trying to make polka dots. Um, and let's do something with the polka dot idea right now. I want to make these little kind of floating eyeballs, because who doesn't like that? Just a circle and another circle. Remember, I'm only filling in the space. I'm gonna go complete it that way. Oh, look at that one, it goes almost off the edge. Good thing I stopped in time and didn't go out of my lines. Oh my gosh. Okay, floating eyeballs of all different shapes and sizes, never the same one twice. Sometimes it's good to take a pause and look at your drawing and see if you like it. I like to make things look like they're going off the edge a little bit because it kind of makes it look like it keeps going. Like that so far, maybe one last little one over here. So the floating eyeball has another little circle inside off to one side and a dot. And another one somewhere else. You could put it right in the middle should you do that. These are just things that people make up. Oh, now they really look like their eyeballs. They're all looking in the same direction. Change it up a little bit. If it's too teeny teeny of a circle, you don't have to put another eyeball inside. You could just put it out. This is not a law or a rule. This is just what feels fun. 
digging it. Feeling like maybe another one there. Okay. All right. Two down. How many do I have left? I've got one, two, three more circles, and then I have the little ellipse shapes too. So there's a little bit to do. I'm going to do one more and just kind of play around with ideas and show you a technique for one that you might find interesting. Um, and then I'm going to let you have a try at it and give you a little time to draw your own patterns. Anything you decide is fine. It may be something from a video game you like, it may be a sport, you could put footballs, you could put cat heads, whatever you want. Hearts, super cute idea too. Whatever uh, strikes your fancy. Okay, let's do one more. I'm gonna do the wiggly wavy thing that I like, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And it's kind of a big deal, so I'm gonna start over here and when I say a big deal, it's because it takes, my Sharpie's tired again, it takes, whoops, a little calm. Trying to not go outside of the lines. Whoa, and when I get up to a place like that, I have to pick up my pen and continue back again. Whoa, it's getting really wiggly. Trying to go, it turns out different every time. It's, I'm acting like it's continuing on underneath that circle. So if that makes sense, try and do that. Whoa, it's getting really wiggly. I like this one. Always different when you practice lines and shapes. It's continuing on under that one, but I don't want it to... Whoa, what am I doing? Sometimes you forget what your pattern was supposed to be. And that's okay too make up a whole new one. Sometimes you don't plan things, they don't, things don't turn out the way you planned, which is good. Okay, so I now have some cool shapes. Um, maybe one more, and then we'll call it good. I like the scales. I'm looking over there at my samples. Let's try something that um, I may not be good at, and maybe you're not good at everything you try too, and that's okay because that's what happens. That's how we get it good at things. Like when you were a little baby and you were learning to walk, you didn't just hop up off the floor from your crawling and say, oh, I got this, I'm just gonna walk, like no problem. You had to try, you had to fall over, you had to get up again, and oh, you got the bruises, ah. You know, so it's just sometimes you gotta just try. So the scaly kind of look is an interesting thing. Now I could just leave it like that and color one side purple and one side red, but I'm going to keep going and adding to the high part of each of the little bumps. This one takes some thinking, so if this is too hard, don't freak out, just try a different one. Okay, and I'm going to the point and the point. This is when it gets all zen, like we talked about. Whoop, Sharpie's tired. And the zen of this is when you go, you're so involved in doing this repeating pattern that you forget that you're breathing or you forget that you're standing or that your homework assignment is due or that whatever, you forget it all, which is kind of nice. And sometimes you get so engrossed. Engrossed means focused. That you just lose yourself. And this is why I make art. Maybe you make it. Maybe you make art for that reason too. Almost done. I've got the first part to do. It started a little low, which made it a little bit funny for me to think about. And I also have to tuck it underneath, pretending that it goes underneath there. And I know that, <laughs> this is when I go, wait, what am I drawing? Okay, there, and then there, and then there. And do your best, you know, if you, if it's not perfect, so what? 
All right, liking that a lot, feeling good. So did I get that? I feel like I need to do something there. No. Okay, so I've got some kind of fun scales. I've got some sort of curvy stripes, looks like a ball, some floating eyeballs, some, I don't even know what to call that. Looks like a sea creature. Um, now it's your turn to try your hand at drawing patterns. If you need to start with a pencil on your paper and practice, that's a great way to get used to something. And then you can commit to it after you like it with using your Sharpie. So have a little fun with this, please. Again, if you're feeling like it's a little hard, pick something easy for yourself or practice on the side first if you need to. And uh, try and remember that this is about you. It's not about you looking like what I'm doing or me looking like someone else. It's all unique, just like you are. And so have fun with your beautiful little patterns and I'll see you back here in a minute. So I wonder how your patterns turned out. It'll be so fun to see what you've done so far. I have, uh, I'm ready to actually get going with the color. I'm gonna be thinking about what colors, what kind of mood I want. Different colors give you, oh, like a cool kind of feeling, like relaxed, and other colors feel fiery and exciting. So you can combine those two or you can choose your mood. So maybe you're feeling chill and you wanna do purple and blue. Let's get started. So I like the idea of some purples and blues and I've used my violet colored, uh, colored pencil and I'm going to get started with coloring in, which one do I wanna do first? I'm gonna do behind the eyeballs. I call them eyeballs, maybe they're little space creatures or bubbles. I'm coloring in one direction. This is one of those tricks that I didn't know for many years as a young artist. Maybe you didn't know it either. And if you color in one direction with your colored pencil and the same pressure, try, try if you can, the whole way, it will make your picture look um, more smooth and kind of ooh, just different. You'll see. You'll know if it's time to try that, or maybe you already know. At this point, I start to feel my shoulder get a little bit tired and it says, oh, well, you need to change your hand position. Maybe I need to put my arm, my other hand that I'm not using underneath that one to kind of hold it up a little bit. Give you a little bit of support. And if you're feeling like you're good at coloring and staying in the lines if you can. Not always a requirement, but kind of makes these little circles look really awesome afterward if you can do that. Staying in the lines part, um, then it's just looking good. Okay, so I'm starting to get close to the finish. I get really absorbed in coloring for some reason. Maybe you experience that. Kind of going around looking and noticing that some of my edges have a little bit of white spots showing. So I'm gonna go in and tickle them a little bit with this. If you see that it's darker in an area, that means you push down harder. Maybe you want to push down really hard and make it really dark purple. If you can do that and not run over your little, whatever your pattern is that you're trying to save, because I'm going to make that a different color. Now here's where we're going to get a little crazy because I darkened this area and it just occurred to me that maybe it would look cool 
if I changed something up a little bit? What if I add a different color? I'm going to my violet blue and I'm going to start over top. And I'm going to add a layer. I'm starting over top of the other purple I just colored to see what color is created when I have two colors. It's called color layering. Oh yeah, so there's a different kind of a bluey purple that I rather enjoy. And I'm starting to feel like this is looking good. You'll know when it's time to stop. Hopefully, or else you'll be coloring all night. Now I started going around to fill in that white spots around the edge and I realized that maybe I need to do that with this other first color. So just have fun and experiment a little bit with uh, what it feels like to color with pencils. If you're new to them, give yourself a little pat on the back because colored pencils are not playing. They're, they can be really, um, they can be really easy and fun and they can be really hard. Um, you'll get used to it. Now I have something kind of fun to think about now. I've got these eyeball shapes um, in the middle that I rather like them being white, but I want the inner spot to be a color and I want it to be blue. And I'm just going to take, now that it's a circle in there, I can gently do little circular movements or what I call tickle the, um, the colored pencil over top of them trying to stay in my line there. Gives it a whole new look. And this one doesn't need it because it just has one little dot. If I had accidentally done that one, then I would go with it. Doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, oh yeah, because I did it over there and it looks good. Let's do it again. Okay, see? Nice. Okay, so that's kind of fun. Um, you can be more perfect about it if you want. You can get like get in there and make all the little areas the exact same shade of purple and not see your color lines at all, or you can be more loose about it. Just go with what you're feeling. All right, so we have, I'm going to color one more just because it's too much fun and I can't leave it alone. This one I'm going to do with the black, I think. Let me think about that. Nope. I think not. I think I will do just the colored pencil. Um, and the reason for that is because you know how to use a Sharpie, but colored pencils are their own beast. So let's practice. I'm gonna do a yellow and I think a blue, because those two colors are rather fun together. Um, now you'll notice that I haven't filled in some of these spaces. Those are great to leave plain if you want. Sometimes you just add, this is a good reason. I'm using the big fat Sharpie for this one. You can just use your Sharpie as a fill in that space really well. You just outline it. I'm gonna notice how slow I'm going. Reason for that is because it's easy to mess up a Sharpie. And it's also really easy to do it slowly and have it look amazing. Okay, so now I can go faster because I'm speed sharpieing. Whoa, okay, starting to get a little, a little crazy now and I'm getting near the end, so I'm gonna slow down and liken that. I might've gone out of my lines just a little bit, but no one's looking. It's all my art. It's all your art. So just keep going and enjoy what you're doing. If you're not enjoying it, take a break, put it away for the day. And I'm going to do some stripes because stripes are really, they give you a lot of action, a lot of impact for your effort. And I'm using the colored pencil blue. And if I get tired, I can put my other hand under here in some way to help it. 
You can change your position. You can sit on the chair or the couch with a pillow on your lap. And with a pillow on your lap, it'll be like a way to angle your drawing board up if you're drawing on a book or using that as the hard surface to draw on. Okay, noticing that my neck is starting to hurt, so I'm going to take a second, do a little stretch. Nice. Okay, oh my gosh, it's looking so good. And we only have another stripe to do. And almost done. Okay. Whew. I could leave that just the way it is, or I could add yellow. Making a decision. Maybe you chose different colors. I like this blue and yellow together. It feels a little beach ball-y which makes me want to go to the beach. It's amazing what you'll think of while you're coloring. Sort of work things out in your head. Maybe a conversation you had with a friend that you might want to do differently next time, be a little bit nicer. Maybe you want to tell somebody something important. You know, it's a good time to work on it. Or not, you can also just chill out and not do anything. So this is a really good start. And I'm feeling like this is such a good start that I want to leave it there and do it a little bit later. But for right now, I'd like to show you one that I've already kind of been working on. This one is, uh, got it's got some of the different patterns that we talked about. Those are eyeballs. There's our little scaly guys. Here's a small little section of the weird wiggly thing that we did. Um, some stripes. You can also do some more organic patterns. This is just a um, little pattern of, let me turn that, of uh, plants. So here's some other patterns that uh, you can think about. This is the sort of a scales and stripes and dots and eyeballs and some more organic patterns. So these may end up being what you want to draw and you may want to do something a little different. Whatever you decide is what you decide and that's exactly as it should be. So I hope that you have a really, really cool time doing this and that you get your zen on and you enjoy the patterns and I'll check in with you next time.